<laughs> so everybody, this is my coach, Sean Kokoska. He is amazing. Those of you that have been with KW, uh, Fran, Joe, all of us have uh, know him from those days. Um, but I met uh, Sean when I did the bold class. Fran, we did the bold together, remember? Um, so uh, that's where- Me too, I, I attended that too, I remember. Yeah, there you go. So um, that's where Coach is from. But uh, without further ado, I'll have Coach take over. Just some housekeeping rules, guys. Um, this, this Zoom event every Thursday is really, really, really geared for realtors to stay focused and stay on point with what is going on right now and how we can maneuver um, and help our clients. So if, you know, affiliates, if you guys are here, send clients, uh, send your buyers, I mean, send your realtors here. Really, it might not benefit you as much. We've got Lucy here. We've got Annette here, which they've been there from the beginning um, helping out. So thank you, ladies. Um, mm -hmm. But again, this whole, this whole thing was created. This whole Zoom meeting was really, really created to keep our realtors um, focused um, and helping them, bringing them quality information to help them succeed in their business. So that's all I have to say. Um, take it away, coach. <laughs> well, how is everybody? We doing okay? Yes, great. Right, right. right. Oh, right. Questions, for, uh, questions for coach Sean will be um, at the end. So just FYI. I, well, I love it. And feel free to interrupt me at any time, guys. I mean, this is a really kind of intimate, loose kind of format. And uh, let's just have some fun together, shall we? Sure. Let's go. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So, um, guys, just real quick, a uh, little background. Um, over a 13-year period, I sold over 4,000 homes in my real estate career. Uh, I, I got on the speaking circuit uh, in my you know late 20s, and uh, you know found myself on the road about 400 or 200 days per year. Excuse me. And uh, in 1999, had our first child, and I thought I don't want to do that anymore. So. Um, I, I didn't want to be away from this little baby. I wanted to stay home and uh, help raise him, obviously. And uh, yet I built my real estate team to the point that I had leveraged through others. I, I successfully went from the I do it phase to the we do it phase to step over that line to the they do it phase to really leverage models, systems, technology, and people to make money. And so I looked at my resources at this point in my life and I thought, well, I'm more of a distraction to the real estate team than anything else. I would invest maybe two hours per week coaching them. So I decided I would start some obvious line extensions to real estate. So um, I, I started a mortgage company in 1999. I started a title company in 2000. I started a land development company in 2001 and a new home building company in 2002. The idea again was six income streams on one transaction meaning I represented my development company when we acquired the land, they paid me a commission. Then of course we'd get our entitlements in place, pulling curb gutter water sewer, and uh, we would sell the lots back to our building company and peel off some profits there. And then, um, you know, whether it was pre-sold or not, um, the real estate company would list that property. Um, we collected a supervision fee as we built the home, which exceeded our expenses, so there's more profit there. Then, of course, the mortgage company and the title company, they would do their thing on the transaction as well. And guys, guys, it worked. It worked like a charm. I'm telling you, it was literally millions of dollars in income every single month. And I was rolling up my sleeves, reinvesting the money. I had 16 land developments going. Everything I built was above a million dollars, by the way. And there's about a 28% profit margin. So you can imagine the, the type of money we were making. And yet... Um, um, something changed and it was around 2008 and you all know what I'm talking about, what changed, right? So I had 16 land developments going, well over 100 homes under construction, 95% of which was pre-sold. I was in debt to the construction lenders, about $132 million and um, about 30% of that was my own cash into the game as well. And frankly, um, I lost everything. In the process. In fact, I was kind of forced to become a short sale expert almost overnight on all my own stuff. And I got to tell you, it was, uh, it was kind of a dark and depressing, uh, really sad time in my life. I had two partners in my development company who immediately claimed bankruptcy and left me with the bag. And, uh, you know, it was deeds in lieu of foreclosure. It was short sale after short sale. And I lost around $30 million in the process. Um, and it was depressing, quite frankly. So uh, in our lowest of lows, I'm here to tell you that um, you have an opportunity, you know, to really find your purpose, your why, what's important to you in this lifetime. And, you know, frankly, at that time in my life, I was adding up my life insurance policies, wondering, would my family be okay if I weren't here? And so bottom line is the purpose, the discovery of the why is really what saved me. And that why is to 
you know, just add significant value to every relationship, every client that I work with to really improve their trajectory so that they can drive the cars they deserve to drive, live in the houses they want to live in. And of course, take those vacations that they want to take with their family. Not today, but yeah, eventually take the vacations they want to take. So um, bottom line is, guys, I, I, I don't feel ever since then, I don't feel that I've worked a day in my life because I've really just focused on consulting training, coaching, and thank you for the opportunity to do what I love to do. And that is just to add value to you guys and just have fun. And especially through Junkie and uh, you know, she's just an amazing, amazing person. She's an amazing family woman. She's an amazing realtor. I mean, she knows what she's doing and absolutely crushing it. And I just love to see you grow Junkie and I love to, to see you spread your wings because you deserve the success that you've obtained, undoubtedly. Thank you, Coach. You got it. You got it. So I, I thought I would just kind of start off here. I wanted to, to share a couple of notes from a coaching call that I did with, with my coach. Okay, my, my personal coach, his name is John Maxwell. He is um, a very successful author, uh, something like 87 books under his belt. Many of you are familiar with some of his writing. Uh, for example, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Um, uh, as well as one of my favorites is Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. If you've not read that book, I would strongly encourage you to get that on audio. It's actually John giving the presentation. By the way, he's one of the most influential presenters that I've ever seen in person, by the way. So if you ever get a chance to go see John Maxwell, take it, okay? I spent uh, this last Super Bowl Sunday at John's house, and uh, it was such a boring game that we, <laughs> we ended up uh, bowling, believe it or not. He has a two-lane bowling alley in, inside of his home there, and, and we ended up bowling for most of the Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl, yeah. So John Maxwell, great guy. Research it. Look up some of his books, guys. He's a fantastic leadership guru, no doubt about it. And I want to just go ahead and share some notes from a recent call that I had with him. It's about how to take adversity and turn it into your advantage, okay? Um, and there's really just a few things that I want to say about times of crisis. And let's all agree that how we view things really does determine how we do things, right? See, our programming, whatever that programming is, it's going to impact our thoughts. Our thoughts, of course, lead to our feelings and our feelings lead to an action. See, if you just don't feel like doing what you need to do today, chances are you're not going to take that action, right? So feelings produce an action an action produces a result. And that result is going to come back to our programming, whether it's a positive result, positive programming, or a negative result, negative programming, right? Now, Earl got that Nightingale, he said it like this. Um, you can take a seed and you can plant it in the earth of the soil. And if you care for it, you water it, it's going to germinate, it's going to grow, and it's going to um, produce whatever it is the seed is intended to produce, right? So uh, bottom line is you could take like a nightshade seed and you can plant it in the soil of the earth and it's going to grow nightshade. You know, you could take a corn seed, you could plant it in the soil of the earth, and it's going to grow corn. Now, the difference between the two, gang, is that corn is, um, is something you can ingest. It'll actually strengthen and nourish your body. Nightshade, on the other hand, is a poison that will kill you. And what a lot of people fail to recognize is that our minds are a million times more fertile than the earth of the soil. And I'm curious, what seeds are you planting in your mind as it relates to your programming? Is it positive programming? Like, I'm going to make it through this? I've found strategies and tactics that will help me get the traction I need so that when this pent up demand wave comes, I'm going to collect my unfair share. Or is the programming like doom and gloom? I don't choose to work because nobody's doing anything right now. And woe is me playing the role of the victim, right? So whatever seeds you're planting, just recognize our mind is like a, a computer. It can't run a program unless it's been installed. And so we've got to be cautious of the seeds we're planting, the programming we're buying into. And many of us, we have to change that programming in order to change our thoughts. And we have to change our thoughts in order to change our feelings. And of course, when we change our feelings, we're going to change our actions. We're going to produce a better result. So um, as I dive into the notes from John Maxwell, I just want to share with you really quick, just six thoughts around, you know, leading yourself through times of crisis. Number one, Put the people first, your prospects, the people in your database, your past clients to come from contribution, to truly just touch bases with them, add value to the relationship. And your focus is to deepen the relationship where you're reaching out, just checking in on you guys. Are you happy? Are you healthy? Everything going okay? Fantastic. Anything I could do to help you? Like if you need prescription picked up or anything like that, just I'm a phone call away. 
undoubtedly the conversation is going to migrate toward real estate. They're going to ask you how it's going. And of course, then you can create a, a real conversation about their plans for the future associated with real estate. Point number two, just educate yourself through times of crisis, meaning where is this market heading? We're going to talk a lot about this today. See, Wayne Gretzky, arguably one of the best hockey players, in fact, probably the best hockey player of all time, he said it like this, I never skated to where the puck was, I skated to where the puck was going to be. Now, you and I have that opportunity to identify where is this market headed to then educate ourselves. For example, I believe the short sale market is going to return four to six months from now. I believe those people that have lost employment, they're living off of the equity of their home, they're, they're tapping out their HELOC, or maybe they've got a second deed of trust, and they're going to find themselves in a position that they need to sell, yet they're going to be upside down after paying commissions and all closing costs. So if you have not engaged in short sale training lately, I mean, you need continuing education hours anyway, right? So I would encourage you to go to ceshop.com. Sign up for the three-hour class on short sales. They'll give you three hours of CE credit. You need them anyway. Educate yourself, right? Um, point number three, be flexible. Point number four, we're going to leverage our team, meaning your team of vendors, your team of allied resource partners. One vision, one mission, yet be open to the different perspectives. Frankly, different perspectives will help you with your benchmarking and trending. Now, the whole purpose of benchmarking and trending gang is to identify the next logical step along the trend line. Where's this market headed? How do I need to modify my marketing approach in order to be there when the puck arrives? So I have a great shot on goal. Um, and also recognize that when you pull your team together, just rec it, all of us are smarter than one of us, no doubt about it. Um, point number five, I would say communicate judiciously more than continually. Okay, so it's not about the number of touches you have associated with people in your sphere and your database. It's how impactful is that communication? So it means using really good judgment with this communication, kind of less talking, more thinking. So communicate with thinking weight, and that requires good judgment. Uh, next point, number six, it would just you know, be authentic. I think um, recognizing we're all leaders, right? You lead yourself every day, you lead your families, and you lead your buyer and seller prospects to accomplish their goal. And I think authenticity is what people want more than anything. They don't want a perfect leader, they want an authentic leader. So uncertainty in times of crisis is totally fine, right? So let me give you just uh, five additional comments on crisis. Number one, real quick, crisis is common, okay? I want you to recognize this. Crisis is common, yet we tend to have this, this behavior that we're gonna over-exaggerate things within our, our minds and say, hey, it's never, ever, ever been this bad before. I wanna help put it in perspective. Like, do you remember back in 1999, around November, people were acting exactly the same way they're acting right now. They were hoarding things like toilet paper and the, the store shelves were almost bare because of this pending, this looming disaster of Y2K. I mean, airplanes are going to fall out of the sky. The whole stock market is going to crash. You are going to lose your job. You're, you're going to be forced to try and sell your house. You won't be able to sell it because nobody else is going to have a job, right? They were acting exactly the same way they are right now. Yet in 2001, we had the anthrax scare. People didn't want to open their mail. 2002, West Nile. 2003, the SARS epidemic, 2005 was the bird flu, and in 2006, E. coli, the economy totally collapses in 2008, right? 2009, the swine flu, BP oil in 2010, the Mayan calendar came to an end in 2012. We thought the universe was going to implode, right? Um, North Korea scares in 2013, Ebola 2014, the Disney measles and the ISIS crisis of 2015, 2016, we've got the Zigna virus. Now, guys, I'm not trying to minimize the... The, the, the virus, yet the tendency is to think that it's never, ever been this bad before. To help put it in perspective, just recognize in 1918, the flu, influenza, was killing, hear this, a million people per week. A million people a week. Now, guys, I pray every day that this crisis will be over. Yet, uh, point number two, a crisis is distracting. A crisis is distracting. So I want to talk to you about traction versus distraction. See, distraction, distraction keeps us from making any progress whatsoever. I mean, if you want to get distracted, just turn on the TV news, right? Yet, what is their agenda? What do you guys think? What's their agenda? Fox News, CNN, talk to me. What's their agenda? To get people tuned in, you know, to get more public tuned in to what they have to say. Well, that's exactly right. No doubt. Any other thoughts there? Joe, you were saying something? Uh, create fear or something uh, to the people? 
Yeah, see, fear is, is, is with the creation of fear, what they're going to do is they're going to have you tune in more often, all the time, in fact. And what they're doing in the process, they're increasing their viewership. They're retaining the advertising clients that they've got now. And guess what? They get to charge them more because their viewership has gone up. You follow me? So they've got an agenda. I prefer to watch like PBS News, by the way. Um, it's not for profit, right? It's a nonprofit. And they're really highlighting some of the, the things that I personally want to see. Like they, they, just the other night, they interviewed a guy that was 79 years old that contracted the coronavirus and survived the coronavirus. I mean, that's the type of stuff that, that I like to get into. It affects my mindset in a more positive fashion. So as a leader, remember, your agenda is nothing other than put the people first. Help them accomplish their goals. There are many sellers out there right now that are in a have-to-sell situation. There are many buyers out there right now that are in a have-to-buy situation. Help them identify what their goal is and then help them accomplish it. See, it's manipulation versus motivation. So again, no other agenda than to lift the people up. And leaders, well, leaders, they help people get traction during times of distraction. Number three, uh, a crisis reveals what's inside of us, right? So a crisis doesn't make, make us, it reveals us. For example, you squeeze an orange, of course you get orange juice. Squeeze a lime, you can get lime juice, right? Frankly, I'd be afraid to squeeze some of these politicians these days, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> chances are um, you guys might lose a transaction or two during the time of crisis, no doubt. Like the buyer lost their job and it's two weeks before closing, they've now pulled the loan approval and unfortunately the deal fell apart. See, to me, loss is simply wisdom acquired early. So in essence, you say, yes, that happened. It doesn't define me, it will refine me. Point number four, a crisis requires adaptability. See, crisis to me is a, a, a case study in uncertainty. Look at it like this, every professional coach, collegiate level, even down to high school level, they all enter their game with a pregame strategy. And yet once the game starts, the pregame strategy is out the window. See, great coaches, great business people, they're going to separate themselves at halftime. They're going to make decisions. They're going to make adjustments based on what they now know versus what they thought that they knew. You guys with me? So we make adjustments, not out of weakness, yet out of strength. And then my last point, we're going to get into a six-step plan that you should adhere to, that I'm personally adhering to, that will help you weather this, this minor storm, okay? Um, point number five. A crisis is the time when real leaders show up. So my input is become visible. Like look at John Key, I'm so proud of her for stepping up her leadership by pulling this group together out of just basically thin air saying, hey, let's add value to one another. Real leaders become visible during times of crisis. They show up with confidence, competence, and a vision. I mean, look at John Key, she's bringing in, uh, like last week you guys had uh, another presenter that was focused on adding value to you, this week the same, next week the same, right? See, leaders are always the first to stand up. They and show up early. we wouldn't be able to do it without, obviously, Annette and Lucy and Anna and uh, mm -hmm. Fran, where are you, girl? That, somewhere around there. She's one of my closest friends. But again, like I said, you know, the re there's a reason why this was brought into fruition, and it's because of, of friends like that. No mm -hmm. doubt, Jackie. And thanks for giving that shout out. Uh, great leaders also express gratitude all the time. Way to go. Um, so they show up early, they show up with clarity. Now, uncertainty is totally different than clarity, of course. See, in the lack of, of clarity, there's complexity. And complexity to me is the enemy of clarity, right? Meaning if you have mist in your mind, it becomes the fog within your production and ultimately your bank account balance, which is not a good thing. So um, we can't control this virus, guys. We can simply control our attitudes. See, leaders, they show up with hope. Now, hope to me is an active virtue that requires courage. I mean, you got to have courage to have hope, right? So look at it like this. You have an opportunity to really differentiate yourself right now amongst all other realtors in your market area. See, there's never been a sailor. There's never been a captain of a ship that distinguished him or herself on a calm sea. It's during times of crisis that they can really distinguish themselves. And you have that same opportunity right now. So I've got six steps that I just want you to maybe write this down. This is the plan that I adhered to back in 2008, 2009, 2010, and I'm adhering to it right now. Point number one, shore up your expenses, okay? Shore up your expenses. I want you to go through every bank account you've got. I want you to look at your debit card transactions, your credit card transactions. Take a look at the subscriptions that you're paying for currently. 
Ask yourself, is this giving me a significant return on my investment or is it improving my knowledge, my skills, my mindset, or my habits, okay? Is, is there something at the end of the tunnel for this particular strategy, okay? Make certain that it's, you gotta hold that money accountable, in other words. I personally did that right when this all started. I cut out over $750 a month in just subscriptions that frankly, I wasn't using to the level that I originally intended to use them at. That's over $8,000 per year in savings, right? Uh, point number two, stop being creative, right? If you're being creative with your marketing dollars right now, stop, okay? Now is not the time to try something that you hope is going to work, right? Hope is never a good strategy. Invest your time, invest your energy, invest your money in proven best practices, things that have given you a significant return on your investment in the past. Point number three, make sure all your current pending contracts are solid. Now, make certain that the buyer is maintaining employment. Make certain that uh, the, the mortgage company is still closing transactions. I heard a nightmare story of uh, a client of mine in Miami, Florida, who uh, they got a clear to close on a Friday. They were supposed to close on Monday afternoon, Monday morning. You got a call from the lender saying, hey, they just closed our mortgage company. We can't fund your loan. So make certain your mortgage company's intact, the title company's on board, and everybody's rowing in the same direction toward closing. Point number four, I would encourage you to start making money like now, okay? And you say, well, that's all good and fine, Sean, yet very few buyers, very few sell sellers. And in most major markets, the activity has decreased by at least 40%. And that's okay, but there's some ways that you can replace your commission income. For example, to make application to become an approved BPO agent with the BPO companies within your state. Now BPO, for those of you who don't know, stands for Broker Price Opinion. Essentially, it's like a mini appraisal. Now the asset managers of these larger financial institutions, especially during times of crisis, constantly have to get their finger on the pulse of the market. And they have to understand what their, their pool of assets, what it's actually worth, because they've got to report this on a, a quarterly basis. So through the BPO organizations, they're looking for agents that are approved BPO agents to go out and do these broker price opinions. They take you about 45 minutes in total to complete, and they're going to pay you somewhere between $75 and $100 per BPO. And frankly, you could do 10 of those a day if you really wanted to, to replace any income that you're, you're losing right now, okay? Um, next, um, if, if your MLS allows you to advertise rentals and things of that nature, I, I would just let your, uh, and if you can get paid doing rentals, representing tenants, that is, just on your social posts, let people know that you're still doing rentals, okay? And it varies state by state, I totally get that. Yet there is rental commissions that can be earned. If these guys aren't buying, if they aren't selling, if they lost their job and they, the transaction fell apart, well, they still have to live somewhere and you can help them identify a, a property to lease and collect a commission. Now, I think after the pent up demand of the market, and here's how I kind of look at this guys. Like if you had a, a plastic water bottle, you took the cap off and you start dumping it out, right? This is how the market was flowing up until about two months ago, right? I mean, it was just flowing like it should naturally, normally, right? Here comes COVID though, and they put a stopper on the bottom of your water bottle. And it's a drip, drip, drip instead of a chug, 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 right? Now, they put the stopper on the water bottle. The, the simple truth is, just because they put a stopper on the water bottle does not mean the liquid is not in the bottle. This to me is pent up demand. So after this all blows over, after people feel safe going outside their homes and looking at real estate again, here's what's gonna happen. They remove the cork, right? And it's not just gonna flow out though, it's as though you squeeze that water, water bottle with every ounce of energy you've got because it's gonna be the surge of pent up demand. And so to take advantage of that guys, uh, I, I believe that getting as close to your sphere of influence right now is absolutely critical. Now, it's all about the conversations you're having every day. And if it were me, I would set a personal standard for myself to create at least 10 live conversations every single day. 10 live conversations every day. See, in this business, guys, there's really only three things that we can control. Virtually everything else is outside of our control. And those three things are really quite simple. You got to know what to say. Okay, so what are the words? And with mere words, guys, in real estate, you can make over a million dollars a year. So you gotta know what to say. Number two, you gotta know how to say it. It's gonna require you to practice. And number three, you've gotta say it to enough people. And the simple truth is, you probably all want more appointments, am I right? Of course, we all want more appointments, yet have you ever scheduled an appointment without having a conversation? I mean, it can happen, but they're few and far between, right? 
So if you want more appointments, you just have to have more conversations. Simply put, a, a salesperson, even without a lot of skill, if they talk to enough people, they're going to find people that want to do business with them. Even a dentist could identify a geographic territory, get access to the phone numbers of the homeowners in that area, start calling in, and eventually find somebody who wants a root canal. So you thank God we're not selling root canals, right? We're selling something that they absolutely need, right? Which is roof over their head. So um, got to know what to say. Got to know how to say it. Got to say it to enough people. All right, how many of you guys want more contracts? Show me your hands if you do. Yeah, more contracts. That sounds fun. Well, guess what? In order to get more contracts, you, you need more appointments. Am I right? In order to have more appointments, you have to have more what? Conversations. How many of you guys want a bigger bank account balance, <laughs> more money, right? Yeah, me too. See, in order to make that happen, you need more contracts, which means you need more appointments, which means you need more conversations. Let's reverse engineer it down to what you can truly control. And to me, it's a minimum 10 conversations every single day where you're not, not in today's market. You're not calling them up. Who do you know who's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I should call today? No, it's not that kind of a call. I mean, you're smart enough to recognize that people are somewhat sensitive right now. And when you just focus on coming from contribution, adding value, it's going to go toward real estate and you'll have an opportunity to earn their business. Next point, investors. A question, yep. just a question on that. Can you just elaborate on a kind of a script that you might use? Just a simple one-liner script that you would use to call a client up and say, yeah, yeah, I would uh, call him up and say, hey, uh, I just drove past your, your neighborhood just the other day and I was thinking about you. I just wanted to check in on you, check in on your family. Are you guys happy? Are you healthy? Is there anything I can do for you? Okay. And just a very sincere, caring, I mean, this can't be fake or they'll sense it. You've got to truly care about them, right? And whatever offer you make, uh, if they take you up on it, then definitely follow through, okay? So um, yeah, it's just a very simple, casual conversation. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, I was thinking about you, too. How's the real estate market? And now you're, you're segueing in and you say, well, actually, there's been a few bright spots. Let me share it with you. And you talk about the last deal you got under contract or a story you've heard from, from like Junkie who got a deal under contract last week or a new listing that just hit the market, whatever the case might be. So things undoubtedly are still happening. Yet here's what I found is that a lot of people, they're just holding off until this COVID thing just blows over. And I can only imagine that there's, there's going to be a tidal wave of buyers and sellers entering the market here just within the next you know, six, maybe eight weeks. So really excited to see that, that happen. And I'm just curious, um, do you and your family have any plans associated with real estate over the next 12 months? So again, just a very caring conversation. If they say, well, is now the time to buy? 100%, yes. Now, let me explain. See, history leaves clues. There's no question about that. When the market collapsed in 2008, the stimulus package the government brought forward was $883 billion, including all the TARP funds and everything else, rescuing the financial institutions, $883 billion. Okay? Now, this, just two months into COVID-19, they've already approved $7.4 trillion as a stimulus package. Now, the entire GDP for 2019, gang, was $21.4 trillion. So they're injecting essentially a third of the entire GDP from, from last year into the economy as a stimulus package. Now, here's what happened in 2009 is that as they injected $883 billion, the natural byproduct of them printing money, making money, is inflation. And it's going to kick in within about 18 months. And that's exactly what happened latter part of 2009, 2000, early 2010. And most major markets had appreciated in value due to inflation within a 12 month period thereafter. Most major markets were out from underwater in 2011. So here's what's happening with $7.4 trillion being pumped into the US economy. Within about 18 months, we're going to see inflation kick. I mean, it's going to be like a rocket ship. Guys, I would not be shocked that buyers who buy a property today at historically low interest rates, by the way, within two years, I would be shocked if their property value didn't double. See, because with them just pumping that money into the economy, what, what they're really doing is they're devaluing the US dollar. They're devaluing it, meaning a million dollars today is not going to be like a million dollars tomorrow. It's going to be more like $2 million tomorrow, if, if that makes, well, not tomorrow, but next year. You follow me? or a million dollars a year from now is gonna be like a half million dollars today, if that makes sense. So inflation, so things like real estate being the number one asset that if inflation is going to impact, okay? 
Uh, secondary to that is going to be precious metals, gold, silver, right? It's going to skyrocket in value. Uh, art, precious art, even exotic cars, you're going to see those prices increase exponentially. So if you're a buyer in today's market, guys, now's the time. Interest rates are incredibly low. I just had uh, a client of mine refinance their jumbo mortgage. Hear this, it was a million dollar mortgage refinanced at 2.5% 30 year fixed on a jumbo mortgage. That's awesome. So as a buyer, you're never gonna be able to do that. By the way, the math behind this um, is for an increase of 1% in interest rate, it affects the buying power of the buyer by 10%. So hear this, if you can qualify for a million dollar mortgage today, and that's your max, if interest rates jump from 3% to 4%, you can no longer qualify for a million dollar mortgage. In fact, you'll qualify for a $900,000 mortgage instead. And in many major markets, 900 to a million, that's a major turning point and it's gonna affect what they can ultimately purchase. So they know what interest rates are today. Let's go with what we know versus what we suspect and let's make the decision now. Now, if you're a seller in today's market, now's the time to sell. No doubt about that. I mean, inventory is exceptionally low, exceptionally low. The buyers that are looking at the property obviously are extremely motivated, no doubt about that. So you're gonna have fewer showings, that's good news. And because inventory is low, there's less competition out there. And of course, as we look at this home, and sure, a home is meant to build and store family memories, it's also an investment. And Investing 101 will tell you buy low, sell high. We don't know what the future is going to bring. Well, we do know inflation will kick in. We don't know how quickly. Could be 18 months, could be two years, could be longer. I don't know. And yet now I believe is the time to sell. By the way, if you've built a team uh, during times of crisis, just recognize, like, let's say you have an administrative support person that you're paying a salary to. During times of crisis, there can be no writers, only rowers. So we've got to figure out a way to make certain that that administrative support person is paying for themselves. So in essence, they can do the work associated with BPOs. You can do 10 of them a day and replace their, their salary, actually turn into profit center for you. And now I've got a, a really big idea for you guys. And it's a really big idea. See, I think after the pent up demand surge and even simultaneously, and maybe even just a little bit before that, I, I think the surge of the market is gonna be that with investors. See, you're probably already experiencing a softening of the average list price to sales price ratio. Is that possibly true? Yeah, where most major markets up until a couple of months ago were trending around 99, 99.1% of list. So if somebody's asking you know, a, a million uh, dollars for a property, on average, they were gonna get 991,000, right? Now we're gonna see a softening of that average list price to sales price ratio. It's gonna trend downward. It's gonna drop to 98, 97, 95, might even get into the high 80s. And as a direct result, we might see a little bit of a downturn in property values, yet once inflation kicks in, it's gonna skyrocket, like I said. So when there's this perception of blood in the water, of course the sharks come out. So that surge that's gonna hit the market is gonna be the investors. The investors, the wholesalers are gonna hit this market really, really hard. And what I wanna do is I wanna position you guys for success. Um, and what I would suggest you do is a real estate investor webinar a real estate investor webinar where, uh, and you might, by the way, what did the inner voice just say to you when I said a real estate investor webinar? Did it say something like, you can't do that. You suck at this, right? <laughs> or something like that. Or John Key, you give me two thumbs up. I love it. Um, see, a lot of times we say, well, that'd be a lot of pressure on me to put together all the, the training curriculum associated with the real estate investor seminar, to build out the slide decks, to be able to present to these people for an hour and a half to two hours. I can't do that. And that becomes the limiting belief. Yet I want to show you a way that you can uh, reduce the promotion effort on your part by, uh, or increase it by 700% and reduce the, the, um, the requirement for you to develop all the curriculum associated with this investor seminar by 700%. So here's what I want you to do. If you've got a pen and paper handy, go ahead and write these key industries down. And I want you to think of leaders in those industries that you already know. Okay, so number one, a real estate attorney. Number two would be a financial planner. Number three would be a property and casualty insurance agent, PNC insurance. Number four would be a property manager. 
Number five, uh, 1031 Tax Deferred Exchange Specialist. Number six, a Mortgage Loan Originator. And number seven is a CPA. Now what I would encourage you to do is reach out to these people individually one-on-one -on -one, and invite them to attend a group meeting that you're gonna do via Zoom. And then you're gonna cast a vision to these people. Uh, in essence, that vision is I'd like to help you accomplish a lot more business this year than you did last year. And I believe that one of the segments of this market that's gonna return and it's gonna return with force is gonna be the investor market. So what I'm gonna ask is that you guys help me promote a real estate investor webinar and I want you to be panelists on my webinar. So coach, um, we do have something like that. Sorry to interrupt you, but we do have something like that coming up just because we had a coaching call last week. We have yep. something coming up for realtors, something similar on the Zoom call in a few weeks. Fantastic, I love panel it. panel together um, to talk to realtors specifically so they can then go out and talk to their buyers and sellers as well. Love it, love it. Okay, perfect. So. Um, so what you're doing is in marketing, we call this a host parasite relationship. And as gross as that sounds, you guys, uh, it, what you're doing is you're getting indirect access to the databases of all these professionals. So in essence, you're giving them a ghost written email campaign. It's an invite campaign to get them to register for this event. Okay. Um, you're giving them a ghost written social media post campaign as well to where they can just do the social posts. It's as easy as copy paste post, right? And collectively, you guys are all promoting this. See, I don't know how many people are in your database. Let's call it 300, okay? You could invite 300 people to attend this webinar and take all that weight, put it on your own shoulders. And you might get 20, 30, 40 people to show up, right? Or you could involve these other seven partners and rather than inviting 300 people, now you're inviting more like 9,000 people to attend your real estate investor webinar. Now, coincidentally, if the real estate attorney invites somebody to attend that's one of their clients or past clients, and they show up, they show up because they trust their attorney, don't they? Well, they're automatically going to trust you because you're perceived to be in business with this attorney. You would MC the event, so you would, you would start it off and kick it off, and you would start with just casting a vision about future mailbox money. You know, how to increase your financial net worth by investing your money in real estate. Now, this is not a get rich quick scheme. However, it is an educational event and it's a get rich for certain type process. It's a longer tail approach. And then you would kind of highlight each of your speakers. For example, you'd say our real estate attorney, uh, John Doe, he's going to be talking to you about setting up whether it be a sub S, a C Corp or an LLC to house your assets to reduce liability. Okay. Our CPA is going to talk to you about the tax benefits of depreciating the asset and just how to do that. Um, our 1031 exchange specialist, by the way, they're going to talk to you about how you can defer capital gains and increase your buying power by leveraging that money up toward getting a larger property. And again, deferring all capital gains and creating more and more mailbox money. Our insurance agent's going to talk to you about the types of policies that are required for uh, absentee owner or investment type properties. And they'll talk to you a little bit about disclosures you need to make to potential tenants as it relates to renter's insurance and things like that. By the way, our financial planner, his name is Steve John, right? He's going to uh, talk to you about how you could take your 401k and roll that over into a self-directed IRA and invest your own money in real estate. Okay. This is all about you guys. This is all about how we can add value to you through education. I've assembled a team here of rockstar professionals that will make certain that you eliminate a hundred percent of the common pitfalls that investors kind of fall into that end up costing them tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And without any further ado, I want to introduce our first panelist today. It's going to be so-and-so and, and here's what he's going to talk to you about. Take it away. And, and you just kind of step out of the way, let them, add value to your audience based on their own industry's perspective. You guys with me? So you turned over to your mortgage loan originator. They're going to talk to them about how they can put their dormant equity in their primary residence to work for them to create mailbox money. See that equity that they have in their property, guys, it's stuck inside the walls. It's not doing them any good. Yet many of the people you know have in excess of $500,000, $700,000 worth of equity in their property, they could leverage that out on a cash out refinance. They could go up to 90% LTV. They could take that cash, leverage that cash toward the purchase of an investment property and provided the property cash flows, 
They'll be able to pay whatever the debt service is on their primary uh, residence, as well as the debt service on that. See, real estate is one of the only vehicles that I'm aware of where you can apply leverage to the purchase through the bank. They're going to give you 75% loan to value, okay? And the tenant's going to pay off that debt for you, right? It's the only investment vehicle that I'm aware of. In fact, more millionaires are, are created by investing in real estate other than any other thing. So it's a big idea. And yes, it would take a little bit of work, yet the bottom line is, guess what it costs you to put this on? Nothing. It's all digital. It's all digital. By the way, your call to action would be, um, I would encourage you through like a, a slicktext.com to establish a keyword uh, text lead capture system. And you see this all the time where somebody says text uh, breakthrough to 888 right? And by the way, that's one of my training programs. If somebody texts breakthrough to 888-111, that system automatically within seconds is going to bounce back a little blurb and then a link for them to go to the registration page to check out my program and engage in that training program and ultimately improve their, their net profit. So, um, and of course, you capture the, the contact information of the person who does that. Now, here's what you would bounce back though. So you would, uh, you would bounce, the call to action is uh, set up an appointment with me. Okay. Um, uh, I'll call it a strategy session. And what we'll do is we'll analyze your existing portfolio. And if you don't have a portfolio yet, we'll analyze the steps you need to take to become a real estate investor in a customized plan building session. Okay. And all you need to do is ske uh, text schedule to 888-111. What's going to bounce back to you is a link to my calendar. And that way you can self-identify a time that's convenient for you to jump on a Zoom meeting with me. And so that's the call to action. You want them to set up a time to chat with you and they'll do it all on their own, right? They just text schedule to whatever your code is, they bounce back to your, your scheduling link. They then click the scheduling link and they identify a time. You're notified by email and text that you've got a new appointment with John Smith at 10 a.m. on Friday. It's an easy way to add value to people and build your investor side of your business. By the way, the first time I did this, I did it at the Marriott in a live setting in the ballroom. And um, we had about 280 people show up to this real estate investor seminar because of the uh, promotion effort. Uh, within the next 30 days, I placed eight properties under contract with an average sales price of $832,000, where the average home value at that time in Denver, Colorado, believe it or not, was only 170,000. So I increased my average sales price by 500% because individuals, they had you know, a half million dollars in a 401k. They rolled it over into a self-directed IRA. They leveraged that cash up and they invested and they bought like a 10 unit apartment building from me. Valued at 1.5 million, right? Or they did a cash out refinance with our mortgage lender and then, then leveraged that cash to go out and buy a duplex at $600,000, right? I made over $100,000 that month and it cost me like $300 to put that entire event on. So it's the highest return on investment that I've ever made. So I wanted to share that idea with you, recognizing that when there's a perception of blood in the water, gang, the sharks are going to come out, no doubt. So uh, point number five of the six-step plan, guys, is now, more, now is more important than ever to get on the phone, to reach out to everybody in your sphere of influence. That SOI, which is an acronym, by the way, stands for source of income, source of income. And when you get as close to that SOI as possible, well, they're going to be referring deals to you and helping you out, no doubt. Uh, additionally, just recognize the expired market will make a strong comeback, okay? The expired market, the short sale market, um, definitely coming back. And then point number six, and we've already kind of talked about this one, educate yourself. Educate yourself on short sales, the BPO process. By the way, the REO market may return. Uh, yet it's going to be a, a longer tail approach. It'll probably return between 18 and 24 months from now. Uh, so the only way to get in touch with and, and gain relationships with asset managers is by doing BPOs. See, the, uh, the BPO company is a qualified intermediary be between the financial institution and you as a realtor. And when, when they, we, an REO, by the way, stands for real estate owned. So the asset managers that have foreclosed on properties and they take ownership of those homes, well then they, uh, that, that's classified as an REO property. It's owned by the financial institution. And they have an opportunity to give you bulk listing contracts. Like for example, John Murray, one of my clients up uh, 
in the northern Midwest, uh, he would close 1,700 REO transactions per year up until about 2014. And then the market kind of shifted back from REO to the traditional sense and he had to kind of retool. But uh, there's a huge opportunity. They would call you up and say, hey, I've got 42 listings in your market area. Do you want them? <laughs> no, of course you want them, right? <laughs> And so it requires the relationship with the asset manager. So the asset manager contacts the BPO company, who's the agent doing a great job on BPOs. And they say, it's John Key Patel. They say, give me your contact info. And they reach out to John Key and say, hey, I got 25 listings. Do you want them? Yes, I'll take them. No doubt about it. All right. So we said that we'd have a little bit of time for Q&A. I know I've been talking a ton. Yet, uh, what kind of questions do you guys have for me? If you want to unmute yourselves. Um, Tammy, would you like to ask him yours or did you want us to? I was just wondering, do you have all the service providers, you know, the CP, your 1031, the CPA, the mortgage, it's taking notes, sorry, uh, da, 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 da. Um, mortgage, insurance agents, financial planners, do you have them all in one call or do you have them in a set of calls to get their interest to keep coming and having them inviting people? You know, I've thought about it both ways, Tammy, and I think either way works. I've got a couple of my clients um, that are doing one call at a time, and they're doing it on a weekly basis. Um, I think the challenge with that is that most restrictions, or at least I'm praying, most restrictions are going to be lifted uh, within the next couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, and people are going to be going back to their jobs and their works, and the life is, life is going to get really hectic, really busy for them. And if you took you know, these seven key industry leaders and you broke it up over a seven-week period, the consistency issue is my, my biggest concern about that. Um, and I, I think our job is to identify the motivated right now, right? See, motivated prospects are located, they're not created. And many of the people in your sphere of influence, your database, the databases of all seven of these other people, they would invest in real estate, yet quite frankly, they just don't, maybe they don't know how or, or probably they just don't have any energy behind investing in real estate, right? And this webinar can become the catalyst to that energy. It will light the fire. And then you're going to fan that fire, make it burn with white heat intensity. And next thing you know, they're submitting offer after offer after, and they're buying and selling and, and you're having a blast. And by the way, I said, I placed eight properties under contract within the next 30 days. That first investment seminar that I did, it probably spun off 75 transactions over a two year period, all on the investment side of real estate. Excellent. So, I mean, it just seems like a lot of people to have at once. So you do give them each like five minutes or how do you do that? To keep yes, it? it's 10 minutes. Okay. So you've got eight, including you, because you're going to be the last one to present, right? Right. So if you give each person 10 minutes, that's 80 minutes. So just under an hour and a half. Um, and you would tell them that this is a two hour webinar. And if you finish in an hour and 30 minutes or an hour and 45 minutes, they're going to be grateful. Yet if you told them it's an hour and a half and it took you an hour and 45 minutes to get through it, they're going to be pissed. Yeah, or an hour and 32 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> so always uh, tell them it's going to be longer than it is. And if you wrap up early, uh, remember, you're going to present as well. And here's what you're going to present, by the way. Um, you're going to cast a vision of future mailbox money and what that looks like. Uh, like for example, imagine with me for a moment, if 15 years ago, you'd bought 10 properties at an average sales price of call it $200,000. And this is part of the, the talk that I gave, right? Um, and I, I know in, in most of your market areas, that would have been impossible for 15 years ago, right? But and not in Denver, okay? Uh, imagine 15 years ago, you bought um, 10 properties at an average sales price of 200,000. You, uh -huh. you amortized the, the loans on a 15 year loan and you got your tenants in there to offset the carrying costs associated with each property. Now over the course of the last 15 years, real estate values have doubled in Denver, Colorado. So you're on a 15 year amortization, 15 years later, you own all properties free and clear. You had $2 million worth of real estate that was leveraged, right? When you acquired, now you've got $4 million worth of real estate that is free and clear. And you're just casting the vision as to what that's going to look like. Then you identify a couple of investment opportunities that are available today. You share your screen and you show them the MLS sheet of say a duplex. Mm -hmm. Then you would, the next slide would be a, a screenshot of what's called an APOD. Many of you are familiar with this. Some of you aren't. So let me just tell you, APOD is an acronym. It stands for annual property operating data, annual property operating data. 
And if you just Google search APOD for real estate, you're going to see a bunch of different providers that, that, have, that will give you access to the software. There's even some free tools out there to create APODs, okay? Now in APOD, ultimately you put in the, the property information, you know, the, the annual taxes, the water sewer payments, the electricity, the rent rolls, the down payment requirement, the closing costs, the interest rates. It's going to give you your cash on cash return. It's going to give you your return on investment overall, your monthly cash flow, your recapitalization rate, and all of that. And you just walk them through, here's an opportunity, and here's the APOD in that property. This property would cash flow at $1,100 per month with a 25% down payment at 2.8% interest or 3.2% interest or whatever it is. And then you put up another opportunity, right? And then the APOD, and then the call to action is text schedule to my text lead capture. We're gonna bounce it right back to you, my scheduling link, and let's set up a time so that we can create a customized strategy for you. And by the way, we've assembled this team on purpose, guys, to make certain that you don't fall victim to the common pitfalls that many investors fall into that cost them tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're gonna show you the right way to make this happen. So take action, schedule a call with me, even if you're not ready to do it now, maybe it's 12 months from now, let's get on a call together and let's identify your financial fast track. Okay, you're gonna get people setting up appointments with you left and right, okay? Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. So um, just some information about this program that Coach just mentioned, guys. I have done it before, um, and actually I'm doing it again. Um, and it's worked um, pretty good. It's worked um, pretty good for not only investors, even first-time home buyers or buyers who are looking to move up, you know, getting listings. So, um, you know, just some food for thought. Um, but Coach, I know you've shared some great information with us. Thank you so much. What is the best way for us to get in touch with you if anyone wants to get in touch with you for um, anything that you are offering? I know there's an icon coaching um, re.com website, but there is a program that you're offering right now, correct? Um, for realtors, I believe. Yeah, it's, um, it's called Accelerated Breakthrough. You know, quite frankly, I was tired of seeing some of my industry competitors in the consulting and coaching space just rake realtors over the coals. I mean, charging $2,500, $3,000 a month to coach and consult with them. Uh, and I saw that being a significant problem because only the top, you know, one-tenth of one percent could really afford that type of, of coaching and training and, and access to the knowledge. So I, I saw some problems with that. And I set out on a, on a mission in 2020 to help 10,000 realtors literally double their production, okay? Um, and I, I created the program that, that enables people to literally double, triple, quadruple their production and their profit in the process. It's called Accelerated Breakthrough. Okay, this is four months of coaching and training, guys. For here, this, the small, low investment of just $350. That's it, total. In addition to that, I'm throwing in uh, my 20-point buyer presentation which uh, I started my career when I was 20 years old as a buyer's agent. And within 18 months was closing over hundred buyer side transactions per year uh, with one unlicensed assistant. Now uh, I, I did that because of the 20 point buyer presentation system. Now, so that's included. It's $199 value. It's included. You also get my listing presentation, my last year in production. I went on 162 listing appointments that year and I took 160 listings. So it's a high conversion present, present, presentation. That's $199 also included. Then you're going to get access to almost 30 years of studying this industry, guys, um, to my, my entire library of content. It is literally hundreds of videos um, of the how to and why to and uh, the what to say, the how to say it, uh, uh, hundreds of scripts, dialogues, objection handlers. Uh, expired scripts for sale by owner scripts, even job description contracts, compensation models, guys, you name it, it's in this library of content. You get unrestricted access to that. That's a $500 value, okay? Uh, also, through my, my friend uh, Grant Wise, the founder of Real Estate Marketing University, he and I developed a Facebook ad training program called Modern Agent Lab, and it's a digital do-it-yourself Facebook ad training program. It's screen by screen, click by click. Seriously, a seventh grader could do this and it will help you improve the number of leads you're getting through your social ad um, funnels, okay? And that's a $500 value that's also included in the program. So frankly, we're giving you almost $1,400 worth of add-on products, 16 weeks of coaching and training, which are conducted by Zoom meeting. It's an hour every single week, 
Okay. The day before each session, you're emailed a workbook link that you download the workbook, you print it off. We uh, ship you in the mail, this three ring binder, right? That has the 16 tabs in it. So you print your own workbook. You then three hole punch it, clip it into your binder. And every week we're gonna give you assignments to be completed prior to the next week that are strategically designed to really get you the traction in your real estate sales business that you deserve, okay? I mean, I'm literally having individuals that have not yet reached their natural ceiling of achievement, doubling, tripling, even quadrupling their production in the process. So it's just, it's, uh, you, you can get access to it at my website. I put that in the chat function. It's iconcoachingre.com. Or if you want to test that text lead capture system that I was talking about earlier, you can simply text breakthrough, just one word, breakthrough to 888-111 and get access to all of that information. Oh, one other thing. Every session is recorded. It's uploaded to Wistia and the same day you're going to get the replay link. So if you find yourself you know, tied up and you can't make a session, we're going to send you the replay link. You've already got the workbook. So you'll be able to get caught up just that fast, right? So um, it's a, a powerful training program, guys. It's everything that I used to sell 4,000 homes in my real estate career. Uh, I've just opened up the Komodo and said, here's how we did it. And because we're doing it in a group format, I can really get that price way, way, way down for you guys and still make it economically feasible for Icon Coaching and save you thousands and thousands of dollars in the process. We're just gonna focus on improving your knowledge, your skills, your mindset, and your habits, okay? And the fourth being the most important. See, F.M. Alexander said this, people do not decide their future, they decide their habits. And their habits decide their future. Yet most people, they form habit without intention. They do it subconsciously rather than consciously. Here's the key, guys. To identify an action that's worth building a habit around and then applying sustained discipline to owning that habit. Can I have just one more minute to tell one of my favorite stories? Yes, please. Go for it. Okay. It has to do with habit formation. And frankly, it was the greatest aha I ever received in my life. Okay. Um, now, uh, just a little kind of backstory for context. See, my wife and I are high school sweethearts. Okay. We met in the seventh grade. We started dating when we were 16. We were married at age 21, had our first child at 28. And now we've got three beautiful kids in 28 years of marriage under our belts. Right. Now at this time in our life, we're 17 years old and we decided we we're going to go see a movie that night. And I agreed that I would drive and I pulled up uh, and we had invited her older sister who's four years older and her sister's new boyfriend. I hadn't met this guy yet. And so I pull up to the house to pick them up. And I got to tell you, this guy comes out of the house and this dude is built. I mean, he's got muscles on muscles, literally biceps, the size of my thighs. Right. And I'm 17 years old. I want to look like this guy. I mean, he had like 12 or 11% body fat, you know, he's just shredded. So I get to know him a little bit. His name's uh, Paul. I said, hey, Paul, um, how often do you go to the gym, bud? And he said, well, every day. I said, seriously, every day, even Sunday? He said, yeah. I said, well, how long's your workout? I'm curious. He said, well, at least two hours. Said, Paul, two hours every day. I mean, I'm 17 years old, having a hard time getting to the gym once, twice a week, let alone every day for two hours. Tell me, how do you do it? And he looked at me like I was crazy. And gang, this was the aha. He said, Sean, it's just something I do. So you get the point, right? I mean, this is who Paul is. This is what Paul does. And guess what, Paul? Well, he gets to look the way Paul looks. He's brought that activity of going to the gym to the point of what I call automaticity. It's now part of his self-image, part of his personal paradigm. This is who Paul is. This is what Paul does. So my question and challenge to each and every one of you is, how about you? What is that action, that activity that is worth building a habit around? to apply sustained discipline to habit formation, to ultimately own the habit. Now, the old thought was that it was 21 days to form a habit. Guys, that's less than a third of the time actually required. See, Megan Oten out of the University College of London in Australia, as well as this guy named Charles Duhigg, the author of The Power of Habit, uh, they've done an extensive amount of research around habit formation for all of us. And they will tell you that it will take on average 66 days to own a habit. So here's a simple example. Let's say you wanted to create the habit around 10 live conversations every single day. See, part of the Accelerated Breakthrough Program, part of one of the workbooks, in fact, the very first session, is a 66-day habit tracker where you identify an action you want to build a habit around, and it's got 66 boxes on it, right? So every day that you do that, 
Monday through Friday, we exclude weekends, then you're going to put an X on one of those boxes. And that methodology came from a guy named Jerry Seinfeld, believe it or not. Before he was the famous comedian, he said, the one thing I have to do every day is simply write one funny joke, practice the timing, the use of pause, the inflections, commit it to long-term memory. And every day I do that, he had a simple uh, annual calendar up on his refrigerator. He'd take a red marker and put an X on his calendar. And he said, my only job was to maintain the chain. Now think of the compounding effects of doing one simple three right every single day. Think about it. After 30 days, he's got a full stand-up routine. After five years, you get the Seinfeld show and literally any person on the face of this planet that has access to the internet knows who Jerry Seinfeld is. So guys, the compounding effects of doing just one thing right every day, that's where extraordinary success comes from. There's no doubt about that. And yet uh, I have, you know, my, my background, uh, by the way, after discovering my purpose, I, I went to work with Gary Keller at Keller Williams, started a company called Keller Williams Maps Coaching. I was the co-author of the Bold Training Program, which has had over 380,000 graduates to date. Okay? It's the most successful real estate training program of all time. I started a different company with Gary Keller called Maps Business Training, and I consulted, for, and we took all of our proprietary model systems, as well as technology, outside of the real estate sales industry, and I consulted for companies like McDonald's, Panasonic, FedEx, Sport Clips, T-Mobile, Genentech, GMC, Pepsi, just to name a few. And I have learned a ton about business modeling and how to apply leverage to your model. So Accelerated Breakthrough, we're going to dive into that. And I'm going to show you how to apply the appropriate leverage, how to build the correct business plan. And over that 16-week period, guys, it is literally soup to nuts. If you want to see all the key talking points, just go to iconcoachingre.com or text BREAKTHROUGH to 888-111. I'll bounce you back the registration link and you can check it out and see all the key talking points and think about what your business could look like with the right knowledge, the right skills, the right mindset, the right habits. Frankly, your business, your production, your bank account will grow to the extent that you personally grow. So I'm here to help and I hope you leverage me to make that happen. Junkie, thanks for the opportunity to give a, a small little commercial there and I trust you guys all got something out of today. Thank you, Coach. I'm sure we all did. I appreciate you coming. You don't know how grateful Heron and I are for you all the time, teaching us so much um, and, and you know, sharing all this. And that's why I wanted to bring you on on this um, platform uh, just to help our agents around here get to know um, you. But more than anything, what nuggets that you've shared with us in regards to what we can do now um, in order to increase our business. Because again, we all have time right now at our at our side, right? We can educate ourselves and we can grow from this. So I think um, whatever you guys can take, uh, whatever Coach has just mentioned, even if it's one piece of nugget, that'll help us add to our systems. It'll only help you increase our your business. So that's the only reason you know I bring these kind of uh, speakers on this uh, Zoom platform. So thank you so much, Coach, for coming on. As thank always. You. I will talk to you tomorrow on our, on our call. I sure look forward to it. Thanks so much, Junkie. Talk Thank soon, you. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.